We have been on the GraphQL journey on Walmart from day one. Walmart actually has two apps. One was for grocery, and one was for general merchandising, which I'm going to refer as GM. So we had these two different experiences. We wanted to unify that. And we wanted to actually have a product help us on unifying that. I'm like, yeah, this, actual, this particular challenges and this kind of requirement is coming up and giving us more ideas to innovate. So we step back and start saying, how can we reduce complexity? Because both sites had their own complexities. Um, the services architecture was pretty contentious. Uh, and so we had kind of narrowed it down to two different architectures. One was what you see here, and this is the back end for front end architecture. This mimicked what we already had. We would be rebuilding it, so we wouldn't be reusing anything. And we could use GraphQL for these and have standalone GraphQL services, but it was gonna follow this more BFF architecture. And the one major drawback that we found, <laughs> which we think slows us down, is if you think about the e-commerce experience, there's one main domain entity, and that's the item, or the product as we call it. And so with this BFF model, this item was then duplicated across multiple services. So whenever we had to go change that, add some new data, which is actually pretty frequent, you might have to go change a whole set of services. And that's why, after all this investigation, ultimately we did land on this federated GraphQL architecture. And so obviously what we changed is we moved away from the usage-based APIs, and we moved to having these subgraphs that are implementing just the domain entity. So each subgraph now owns a different entity. We have the cart, we have the item service. So instead of being duplicated, this item service is now its own service. It owns all the item data. So now when we're making changes, we just change the item service. And so you get things like a strongly typed schema and introspection, and using those, you can get a lot of really great tooling. So you can build your you know, client-side models and have everything be strongly typed, and obviously this helps with your development. And then when it comes to the federation, again, a lot of these are gonna be points you've heard over the last three days. Uh, that single source of truth, so having the item, ser item service own that one entity is huge. Uh, just the simplicity of the client development, you have one entry point now, you don't have to worry about a whole bunch of different services to main connections to, maintain connections. And then you get to decide how you're gonna divide up your subgraphs. And I've heard some great talks about, you know, should you do uh, your subgraphs based on your teams, based on your models? And I don't know if there is a right answer, um, but it allows you to make that choice as an organization to what works best for you. I think that's the important part. And then obviously the scaling part. So when you're dealing with lots of subgraphs, you can size things up uh, however you see fit or however you need. It just gives you that great flexibility. So that kind of explains why we moved to GraphQL. We saw all these really great benefits, but now we actually had to do it. And that's really the hard part, as we all know. Development is hard. And when we started development, we actually didn't have federation. And the reason we didn't is because we just hadn't set it up yet. We hadn't figured out how to do the schema publishing, and we just went with simple, standalone uh, GraphQL services. And we were duplicating data in this model. So if you see, we have search and cart. Those also returned items. We did duplicate data, but we just did this so we could work out the client-server communication. We could figure out how to build our platform and build the tooling we needed to be able to scale this out for all of Walmart e-commerce. And so our associate beta launch, we had an architecture that looked like this. By the time we released them, we had implemented federation. We had a gateway. We had also done more than just have one app. We had uh, rolled out Android, iOS, and web, and we had created more subgraphs. So now we were truly running federation and we were able to really test, was this gonna work for us? And luckily it did. 11 months after we first made any check-in, we started to roll this out to all of our customers. And again, it was a phase rollout, so it didn't happen in one day. We did things over time, very methodically. And this is what our graph looked like. It's the same as what we saw before, except now we had around 20 subgraphs. And all these subgraphs were required to, to meet all the functionality we needed uh, for our application. And then this is the complete timeline. So 14 months after we started development, we had switched 100% to this new platform. All of our customers were on the new apps. We really did replace the whole e-commerce stack 
from the services, first services layer through the front end in, in just 14 months. And let's look at the impact slide. I'm just summarizing like, okay, where we were, right? Two sites, two different experiences, two search, two cars, right? Not very inefficient way for our customers to do it. But today, we have like one single Walmart app that actually has both the unified experience. GraphQL has played a very critical role in like empowering this whole site. So this entire site, mobile apps are running, are powered by all GraphQL orchestration layer, what we have today. Hope this uh, journey that we have actually discussed over here gives some inspiration that Walmart actually can build this for the scale what e-commerce site is. You guys can definitely do it too. Thank you very much for your time. And hopefully this actually inspires you. Thanks, guys.